Season 3 of Yuzuru Hanyu is my emergency contact, the Fan You Fan Me podcast, has finally finished loading. And as promised at the end of Season 2, we're going to talk about... I think that says it all. But first, it's no surprise that a lot has happened since Season 2 ended in November of 2023. I mean, we are talking about super productive, professional athlete Hanyu Yuzuru, after all. If I listed everything, there wouldn't be any time to talk about... So I'll just mention a few of my favorites. Yuzu's mirror took a picture of him. Arigato, Sekisei. Yuzu started, and I thought finished his first solo ice show tour. Yuzu premiered two new programs on his YouTube channel, one of which I must stop what I am doing and watch every time someone just mentions the title. I'll let you guess which one that is. Yuzu tried to become a wall. Yuzu convinced me it is time to buy a watch. Yuzu gave a book report. Yuzu revolutionized the functionality of a tote bag. Yuzu became Gucci's newest brand ambassador. Do I see a Gucci tote bag in the future? Yuzu brought back UA Practice Yuzu. (sighs) And the biggest, most shocking news of all, Yuzu petted a dog. With all of that happening, and later I'll cover even more in this season's first Hayaku Fanyu, I needed something extra special to start Season 3, so I had no choice but to fly 7,000 miles to Yokohama to see Yuzu in... At least I think I did. What I remember. Six rows from Yuzu. In Yokohama, in Pia Arena MM, In the west section, Nishi for Nishikawa Down, right? I was in the sixth row for the final performance of the entire Repray Tour. Or so I thought. Good one, Yuzu. And it didn't seem real. Until I heard a fan you behind me coughing through all of Itsuka Awara Yume. And it struck me. Yuzu can hear her, too. From the very start of the Repray Tour, Yuzu was determined to level up in every way. A faster spin, a louder foot stomp, a sexier double finger snap, check that one off the list, Yuzu, a stronger poos on head pat, we even got a hair grab in Hope and Legacy. Now there's a level up. But what happens when the most leveled-up person in the world refuses to settle with seeing his initials permanently entered at the top of the high score list? He starts causing the rest of us to malfunction. During the live stream of the premiere of Repray in Saitama, even the worldwide love gush that is the Yuzu Twitter thread stopped. Yuzu demanded, demanded, our full attention. Sort of like when he asked us to be quiet in Yokohama when he was trying to speak English. We're sorry, Yuzu. Oh, Tony. We just got excited. At least I can say I didn't leap to my feet in a moment of evangelical healing when you skated past and pointed to your butt during Let Me Entertain You. That's a true story. That particular fan you was just a few rows down to my right, and the fan you behind her had to grab onto the back of her gift blouse on to keep her from rushing the ice. Either that or she thought, if you're making a run for Yuzu, I'm going with you! Repray is intense. Yuzu said he still wanted us to feel the nervousness of competitions even after he turned pro. Well, mission accomplished! After just day one of Saitama, I seriously considered titling my Repray blog post, Yuzu is stressing me out. During the intermission of that very first performance, despite the fact that I had just been sitting on the floor in front of my TV, I tweeted, I 
thought I was going to have a heart attack. You just never know what trick Yuzu is going to pull out of his magma sleeve next. Which may be why there is never the thought of, I didn't know Yuzu could do fill in the blank. It just seems obvious he can do anything. Stage combat, tumbling, fresh produce selection. You know what I'm talking about. Fly. Wait, we knew that one. I think he could come onto the rink and play the tuba, and we'd all say, well, of course he can do that. And better than anyone in the history of tuba-ing. All this to say, you deserve all the credit in the world, Yuzu. And I can't wait to see your tuba costume. It stressed us, it dazzled us, it moved us to tears, and some of us it moved to make a run for Yuzu! But Repray also furthered the concept of Yuzu Whiplash. How does he transition so smoothly from dark, determined, sexy warrior Yuzu to innocent, don't-go-out-without-a-sweater, wide-eyed Yuzu? I found myself worrying about Haru Yuzu waiting backstage with Gate of Living Yuzu, And then I remembered that they are inside the same person, and that neither one is an act. One minute he has you fleeing into a dark corner, and the next you're taking his hand to help him safely cross the street. But let's spend a little more time with Gate of Living, because I think that's where most of us would be perfectly happy living for a very long time. Six rows from Yuzu, and you hear one of your favorite lines in the entire show. And it hits you. It's coming. And you're there. And it is coming. And it is coming for you. And even Yuzu is repeatedly telling you to... But that is doing nothing to help, Yuzuru. I am certain that since Yuzu's erotic red runway, let's call it what it is, every fashion designer is trying to figure out how to get their models on ice. I hate to break it to them, it's not the ice they need, it's Yuzu! Omedito gozaimasu, Gucci-san! And we all know where that red runway leads, and it isn't to an octagonal hydraulic platform with a spotlight. It's a corner. Shaped like a corner, and it's dark. Oh, so dark. Earth use, I might be pinch hitting for your team on this one. Gate of Living is the new blinding lights, and it has taught us something very important. When Yuzu is revealed with a white light behind him, hold on tight, because whatever he is going to skate in a straight line is going to be the greatest thing you have ever seen in your life. Gate of Living revealed yet another Yuzu skill. Charades. You're seasick. You're a snake. An antelope. A crocodile. A throw rug. The sexiest man alive! I win! But I don't think the fan Yuz were shouting out charades guesses while Yuzu was on that platform. There was a different quality to the screams coming from the audience during that part. I don't need to go into detail about why. I think you know why. Now, Gate of Living can join its siblings in the Programs We Never Saw Coming category. We didn't know what we were getting ready to experience when Yuzu started One Summer's Day at Gift. The same with Ashura-chan. I distinctly remember thinking, oh, this is new, Yuzu in a blue tie and a red shirt. Our deepest thoughts were probably nothing more than the musing of, I wonder how many attempts it took him to tie that tie. But now. We know that is THE blue tie, and THE red shirt, and we know those white fabric strips from much further than six rows away, which have a beautiful subtle teal gradient at the bottom which I had never noticed until I was six rows away. And even though we want to yell, HAKU! From the moment they make their entrance from backstage, we choose to be respectful, and instead simply scream it in our hearts. Well. Most of us try. Honestly, I still find myself making questionable sounds during Haku. I'm not sure that's ever going to stop. There are also moments which simply float down softly and land like a feather on your shoulder. Moments that come from Yuzu as effortlessly as breathing. 
moments like the Haru Yokoi head dip. Cactus, yes folks, Cactus was in that sixth row with me, made the mistake of leaning over to ask me something mere seconds before that head dip. No one has ever been shushed so quickly. Unless they were cheering for Yuzu when he was trying to speak English after 2.5 hours of no miss skating for his life. Mata, go menasai, Yuzu. Speaking of sounds, I would like to underline three times the little hup, jump sound that Yuzu made at the end of one summer's day during day one of Saitama. I have missed it every time since. What I love most about this sound is that it makes me believe that for even just a hup instant, he forgot he was being watched and he was skating in that moment with himself alone. But do I really believe Yuzu ever forgets anything? No. Except maybe one of his same gloves. Yuzu clearly got the message that we wanted to see him playing video games. I think we had all sort of imagined it would look more like it did on the couch for the Monster Hunter CM, but Yuzu always imagines things better than we do. Though fan Yuzu, now we know what Yuzu's dark corner looks like. I had always thought it would include the green pajama pants, a box of choco pies, and some bed hair. Or maybe that's my dark corner. During Saga's day two live stream, I sent a message to a fellow fan you that read simply, the hair, the hair, the hair, the hair, the hair, the... Messages were flying blindly as we attempted to communicate without taking our eyes from the screen. Later, she asked, Hey, when did you cry, the hair? To which I replied, the first moment I set eyes on Yuzu. Speaking of hair, I have concluded that Yuzu's Balenciaga hair, am I still allowed to call it that now that he's a brand ambassador for Gucci, was a gift, gift perhaps never to be seen again, like a yuzu hair comet. Gift also provided a precursor for one of my favorite things, Silhouette Yuzu. It makes a great avatar for a blog, just saying. I'm glad that Reprey fully embraced, appreciated, and reproduced the artisticness of Yuzu's silhouette. And that ending silhouette of Yuzu standing in the sky? Why is that not on a t-shirt, Yuzu? or a program cover, or a clear file, or an acrylic standee, or the welcome sign at Haneda International Airport. I would enter a ticket lottery, fly across the ocean, take a picture of the Yuzu Silhouette Sky Banner welcoming me to Haneda, wait outside the venue in the headwind. Seriously, Yuzu always seems to arrive on the wind like Unico when I go to see him. Ten points if you get that obscure reference. And buy all of the merchandise just to experience the behind-the-scenes montage at the end of the show. Where can I buy the external phone charger shaped like a bunch of grapes? This montage, like its same a montage sibling at Gift, is such a dynamic demonstration of the unbelievable amount of effort Yuzu puts into these shows. It's like he's saying, it is not easy, people, and I'm going to show you in the most artistic way imaginable. Or, to put it in Yuzu's exact words, it's not as easy as it looks. Don't worry, Yuzu, we've never thought it was easy. In fact, sometimes it worries us just how not easy it is. We have a work of art creating works of art for us. Requiem is a perfect example of this. All we needed was Yuzu and a spotlight, and give or take about 35 beautiful lanterns. In Yokohama, I had the unique opportunity to watch the show at eye level with Yuzu. With a blur of a dimly lit audience or complete blackness behind him, instead of a sea of projections being viewed from afar. When you take away the projections, we still have Yuzu's artistry. I think we would all agree that we were seeing cherry blossoms swirling around him in Haru Yokoi long before they made their digital entrance in Prologue. Yuzu has always been projecting to us in HD. And I love imagining him practicing every moment, every vision, every expression he wanted to project to us during Repray. When the hood comes off his head during Sorcerer or Mickey Yuzu, because that actually takes some skill. That side-to-side -side head caress in Gate of Living, because, well, I think we all know why I love to think about that. The toe-pick drag before Megalovania, 
Yeah, we saw you get amused at yourself when it didn't quite take day two in Saga, Yuzu. And we also noticed when you fit it back into the encore later perfectly. That last minute finger ripple as the camera panned down at the end of Gate of Living on day two of Saga. What was that, Yuzu? And please, please give it to us again. Yuzu once said in an interview that he notices the audience with their hands clasped in prayer for him during his programs. I realized that I and the, not Cactus, fan you beside me were doing this very thing during Messenger. How could you not? You're praying for Yuzu's safety, you're praying for your survival, you're praying to give thanks for this hairstyle. There are all sorts of reasons. In fact, I'm not convinced that the six-minute warm-up before Messenger was actually for Yuzu. I think it may have been for the rest of us to get our affairs in order and check that our global health insurance provides coverage for goat attacks. Just as I claim I can hear myself screaming during Say May It Gift, I would like to go on the record that I started the applause for Yuzu's Haku entrance on day two of Yokohama. The second they pulled back that black curtain to reveal Haku Yuzu, I burst into applause. He was like a beacon of light, even more than how Yuzu is a beacon of light on a normal day while dressed all in black. At the risk of conjuring other thoughts, Yuzu is a blinding light. You feel like you are squinting at the brightness, just like Yuzu when he made his Haruyokoi entrance on day two of Yokohama. Blinded, but happy. Because you simply can't believe you're in the same room as Yuzu, actually seeing him. You think you will see him differently. There will be a realness that has never been there before, and you'll think, ah, there's real boy Yuzu. But even from mere feet away, it was hard not to feel like you were watching him on TV. He is every breathtaking artistic photo, but in real time, doing real things. Breathing, sweating, talking, dancing a Shura-chan, which is a whole other thing when it is happening in front of you. But he doesn't seem real doing those real things. Gomen Asai, Yuzu, it must be frustrating to have to try and convince people you are human. And if you skate Ashura Chan much more, even you're going to get too cool for Yuzu. While we all know he isn't really perfect, though he comes pretty dang close, I will say that Yuzu is the perfect Yuzu, with all of his idiosyncrasies and obsessions and insecurities and tragically short arms and legs. I put that in just for you, Yuzu, but we all know the truth. And you want to store every second of this perfect Yuzu in your heart forever. Then the show ends, and the kind Japanese fan you beside you lets you know it's time for your section to leave, because you totally screwed up following the rules at GIFT, because your Japanese announcement comprehension GOE is super low, and you realize that Yuzu has wiped your brain clean and you remember nothing! But once you wave goodbye to Yuzu at Haneda and fly 7,000 miles home, set up your RJ 1.0 acrylic standee and carefully put the Repray program in a place of honor, you realize it isn't about remembering everything you saw. It isn't about remembering every finger bend, every exhale of breath, every longing reach, every perfect wisp of hair perfectly flipped back by Yuzu's perfect hair aerodynamics. It isn't even about seeing Gate of Living. Okay, it's a little bit about seeing Gate of Living. It's about remembering everything you felt. Everything in a heart so full of love for this person that it overflowed and took over the open space in your brain. There was no room for memories. Your entire existence was filled with love. And that's what I remember. All the things I couldn't remember from six rows away because I was filled with too much love for Yuzu. That and Gate of Living. There is one particular Gate of Living moment that I have to talk about in even greater detail. The stair crawl at Saga. In fact, I have too much to say about that approximately four seconds, so it is going to be an entire blog post of its own. That's right, there will be a blog post, which will subsequently be featured in a future podcast, dedicated to only four seconds of Yuzu. Last I checked, six seconds held the shortest time for inspiring an entire post record. So wait for it.
I have a lot to say about that. But before those four seconds find their way to page and podcast, it's time to talk about everything else that has happened since the end of season two. So here we go with the first Hayaku Fanyu of season three, the part of the podcast where I allow myself 30 seconds each to speed comment on some of the latest, or not so latest, Yuzu events. Not much has happened since November, right? Um... Let me correct you. There he is. I've missed that Yuzu. Hayai. Mother 2, Vague 2, Interview. Yuzu's 12 part interview with Mother 2 creator Shigesato Itoi gave the fan Yuzu a nearly two week daily dose of Yuzu. I wondered if Yuzu marked each day on his calendar and woke up thinking, today they'll go crazy because I said fill in the blank. Whether it was Goldfish Day, or I'm Boring Day, or Brilliantly Vague Redirection to Video Games when asked about my personality day. Yeah, Yuzu, we noticed. Okairi, Yuzuru Vague We love him so. P.S. Of course we sold out that sweater. The Yuzu Ara Shrine While in Yokohama for Repray, I visited the Kino Kuniya bookstore to witness for myself the Ara Magma Yuzu Tapestry, also known as the Yuzu Ara Shrine. I proudly took my place in the line that wrapped all the way down the stairwell to be able to see a tapestry of Magma Yuzu, which I had seen on my way to get in line. You heard me right. I was waiting in line to see a photo I had seen on the way to getting in line, but I still wanted to wait in line to see it on my turn. Let me Yuzu. The way Yuzu says Let me is right up there with the color naming in prologue. Green, this you just shake your head and think, how is this person this precious? Maybe the key is in the words, let me. Lest we forget the Let me correct you. Yuzu, you can start any sentence you like with let me, and I know a few thousand Earth Yuzu who will agree with me. Yuzu in a box. The sequel. When the screens wouldn't part for Yuzu to make his exit during day one of Saga, I imagined Yuzu thinking, well, this is how it ends, trapped forever in a box with the fan Yuzu. Don't worry, Yuzu, we would have worked out some kind of reasonable timeshare amongst us, and we collectively have enough gyoza in our freezers to keep you fed for a lifetime. The Repray Sendai Surprise no, this isn't the name of a casserole made of Zunda, Gyoza, and Gyutan. I'm talking about the added Miyagi tour dates. When Yuzu announced he was adding two shows in Sendai to the Repray tour, my first thought was, I wonder if Yuzu is going to send everyone who purchased the tour t-shirt an updated version with Sendai added to the back. Just kidding, Yuzu. I'm afraid you would really try to do that. Thoughtful Yuzu during the encore of Yokohama Day 2, Yuzu made a special point to thank the audience members who were in the standing room seats, commenting that they must be very tired. You know who else must be very tired, Yuzu? You! Danny Boy Vindication Honest fan you time, I have hated the song Danny Boy for my entire life. Honkani? Don't know why, just have. When they played that song for Yuzu on the Ogunsan TV show, I said to my TV, Don't skate to that song, Yuzu. Well, we all found out just how much Yuzu listens to me. But don't worry, Yuzu has now purified that song for me. Just like he has unpurified some other songs for me. I'm looking at you, blinding lights. The Honest YouTube Member Video I love that Yuzu is opening up more to the fan news. Not by sending us selfies with Pusan or posting which electrolyte powder packet he's having, but by honestly expressing his concerns and the difficulty of his journey. In one of his more recent member videos, he was particularly candid, and I could just imagine Staffson thinking, Cut the mic! Cut the mic! He's gone rogue! Daijobu, Yuzu. We're here for you. For all of it. The audience Nihongo Shushing. By the end of Repray, even Yuzu was overwhelmed by Yuzu. So it's no surprise that when it came time to speak in English, his Yuzu circuits were fried. The best part is, he explained why he was shushing the English speakers in Japanese. And this is yet another reason why we love you, Yuzu. I'm speaking English, so no, I'm speaking Japanese. Sorry. 
The Overlooked Nickname Yuzu has had many nicknames. Tuna Zaru, Short Zaru, the kitty one we don't talk about. I am usually really proud of the fan use and the creative and unique nicknames they are inspired to create, but I am sorely disappointed that no one picked up on what I think was an obvious one from the end of Repray when he is shown floating inside a drop of water. Do Zaru! Okay, I'll stop. I think that covered somewhere around 11% of everything that has happened since November. If I didn't talk about your favorite Yuzu event, let me know on social media or at fanyoufanme at gmail.com and maybe you'll hear it on the next Hayaku Fanyu. Hayai. I started this episode with a post about what I remember from Repray, and I found it only fitting to end this episode with one moment, one precious crystal memory, which even my Yuzu overwhelm couldn't eclipse. My favorite Haruyokoi is the one from Fantasy on Ice Niigata in 2018. There is an innocence and lightness in Yuzu's skate from that early time in Haruyokoi's creation. I particularly love his pre Aina Bauer expression. And in Yokohama, I saw that exact expression on his face. Not on a screen, not through binoculars on his face directly in front of me, and he looked happy and free. It is what every fan you wants to see all the time. That is my most vivid replay memory, the perfect moment I saw the perfect Yuzu, happy and free. The Fan You Fan Me podcast has officially returned, and I have no doubt that Yuzu is going to keep it interesting for us this season. We've already been promised more Repray, see earlier comment about tricks up the magma sleeve, and fantasy on ice. Goodness knows what the sleeves will look like in that. If there are sleeves at all. I'm sure Yuzu has even more planned for us. Whether it's sitting on another Gucci suitcase, walking down a red runway, announcing a third ice story, oh please, oh please, Yuzu, or releasing Gift on Blu-ray. I have to keep trying. I will be in line for it all, Yuzu. For everyone waiting in line with me, you can follow Fan You Fan Me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Redbubble, where all Fan You Fan Me artist profits are now donated to Tohoku Disaster Relief, YouTube, and FanYouFanMe.com. We can't wait to see what you will project to us when you bring Repray home to Miyagi, Yuzu. And just like in the other cities, I know we'll remember it all. Until next time, re-say it with me, Yuzuru Hanyu. The Fan You Fan Me podcast is a Back to the Forest production. Back to the forest. <laughs> um, you know, just kidding. <laughs>